pushing them to go after it and, and don't acquiesce no matter how old they are. You know, this is the way we're going to practice and what we're going to do. We may suck at it now, but eventually we're going to be okay. All right? Um, and, and, and don't cave. Um, and then just try to figure out ways to, to, to have fun with your group around some of the stuff that you're doing. I mean, we have a great time at practice. First of all, we all, we, we, you know, our energy is really high. Our older guys understand how important practice is. So it's not just all just like pound and wet. I mean, we, we really have a good time. Part of that is that the movement and it's action. It's like boom, 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 boom. You know, and this is the stuff that parents don't see when they want their kid to be recruited. Like, okay, I want to play for whoever. I mean, take a look at that practice and you figure out. I got a lot of shit that I need to know in a very short period of time, and I got to execute it at a really high level at a fast pace. And it isn't about me just dodging Johnny and going to go and score. It's probably the least thing that we're looking at, to be quite honest with you. So. Uh, I was just curious, like, uh, when you, uh, looking at this, I mean, the majority of it looks like drill-based, like microcosm, small-sided. Is that, per, like, a predominant theme? like? in relation to doing 6v6 or 10 on 10, you know, rides clears, like we'll the majorities. It. It's, you know, it's our first day. Yeah. And part of our training process with our gonna build up to it. coach is, is to keep these guys in a little bit of smaller and confined spaces and gradually lengthen them out. Um, we're going we're gonna to lengthen out more next week. We have a scrimmage on the 18th. Um, but early starting it small, more confined, tighter, more banging, yeah. getting their bodies a little, the armor back on them a little bit. You know, we haven't been on a lacrosse field since yeah. month and a half. Oh, yeah, I don't even know when our last day was. So, so it's, we're going to build, we'll build into it. <coughs> but, but next week we'll do much more full field. We'll probably start some of that a little bit towards the end of this week. Much more full field, get us ready for our scrimmage. From the scrimmage, we'll reevaluate you know, where we are, what we need to work on. That'll be that third week of practice, and then the fourth week we'll build a lot of that into, and then preparation for our first game. So yeah, it's just a process. Yeah. yeah. See, I was wondering though, like seeing that big macro vision is into creating these micro practices. Like we got all the feedback from our strength and conditioning coach in terms of how to generally design practice, and we've we've stuck with that too. You know, like, it's almost like this longitudinal study of mm -hmm. where our team has been and where we need to get to by February 1st and how to keep our guys healthy, how to make them be the best cross players possible, all that. What, what age do you recommend that the kids get into the weight room? Is that like it's still high school thing similar or is that? Okay, it's like coach Tickle. Uh, we, we have a phenomenal strength and coach. I said it at the last He meeting. did. It was like 14, 13, 14. After puberty. I mean, it's, I, think, I think that's been a, something that people have thrown I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Um, yeah, I mean, probably it would make more sense, you know, after puberty. Yeah, I would guess. Uh, I think push-ups. Like, yeah, but yeah. Like body weight and like yeah. Yeah. speed ladder with, for like developing some coordination and pull-ups. Pull-ups, jump, jump, like jumping up a, a jump rope, <laughs> box jumping, yeah. like getting maybe doing some resistance band stuff could be actually really great for some, some kids that are maybe seventh, eighth grade. Yeah. But you know, you always worry, worry about the, the growth stuff thing. Yeah. I don't think I don't think putting weight on anyone's back. More plyo. We, yeah, 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 more plyo. Agility wise, and, and again, we're, it's just we're in our career, we're not, you know, we're, we're, push ups and pull ups. Right? 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 Yeah. So, like, yeah. Yeah. Uh, conversely, yeah. how much time you spend in practice with you know younger kids, fifth, sixth grade? Um, stretch. Is it necessary at that age? Is it essential? Uh, oh, that's a good question. I remember when I was five years old, fifth or sixth grade, I never stretched shit. We played ball all the time. I think some of that may be overrated. Hey, run run to the furthest fence and back. Yeah. yeah. So, 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 while the coaches coach practice playing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think, uh, I, I think, yeah, I think some of that is carried away at these younger ages because now.
now it's a thing, right? Yeah. Yeah. Stretching's a thing, and you know, skipping's a thing, and all these little fancy stuff. I, I'm just having to take a lap, you know? I usually ask them, to be honest. <laughs> Like, I'm like, do you guys need a stretch? And they're like, nah, we're good. And I'm like, okay, let's crash. <laughs> Most of these little rascals don't run hard cool. enough to, 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 to <laughs> tweak anything. I don't think I would spend a whole lot of time on it. I think gets, you can get a lot of that stretch and warm it up, like, in your first time around. around. You get something yeah. light. Touch your, your toes five times. Yeah. <laughs> Anything else? Awesome. All right. Yes. How do you manage like coaching when you've got goalies and things like that when you have limited people to actually do that? Yeah, it's, that's hard. It's hard. I, I uh, for the longest time I coached by myself for two reasons. <laughs> one, really there's one reason. I didn't want anybody else to coach with me. So I, I like doing things the way I want them. <coughs> what anybody else thought, so that was a selfish thing. But, um, it's hard, you just involve the team. So I would have our guys warm up the goalies, and tell them what I wanted, and teach them how to warm the goalies up, and rotate guys through that. And again, ownership and, and assigning accountability to young men, young people, is a good thing. And teaching them the value of being accountable to their teammates and how I needed them and it created a really good camaraderie with a lot of the kids that I coached because they started to trust me because I trusted them. And, and so it takes a lot of time, it takes communication, it takes a plan, and, but that's how I do it. And it worked out pretty well for the most part. Yeah. Do you have any questions? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I gotta go over here. For you guys that play professionally, like now you're coaching, playing at high levels. How do you get your resources for coaching? I mean, I think as coaches, we're all looking for resources, how to grow, how to become better. I mean, you guys are. Uh, I mean, that guy. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, aside from him, though, I mean, like, do you get it from the coaches that you play under, like U.S. Cross or PLL? I mean. You you can find anything on the, the internet. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's, that's true. But I mean, how how much of it is everything. really good? Though. Yeah, I mean, that's. I think you. I think that's something. You know, I think these guys look. They're they're around the best of the best. So they're awesome. They are the best, right? So they 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 work in a kind of a different planet to, to, for the most part, right? But they're around. They just went to the U.S. team. They were around coaches. They had a coaches clinic with a bunch of guys that that, that are peers of them. And they, talked about different things, they came back with new stuff, but the internet's a really valuable tool, Adam. You know, can talk more about it. And I think what you gotta do is look at it and see how it fits. Does this make sense to you? If it doesn't make sense, then it doesn't make sense, yeah. right? But if it does, then how can I take it and maybe format it to what I really need? And that, really, that's what it comes down to. You can, you can go to a thousand coaches clinic, you can hear anybody talk, and at the end of the day, how do you take a nugget out of what you've heard, and then how do I how do I build it around what I'm dealing with? Right? Everybody in here is probably dealing with a completely different level of, of kid at, at a different stage. But you know, <clears throat> there's a drill that a ground hole drill away it can be something that you might put into. And that, that's one thing, right? And that's really what you usually come out with one or two things from these things, and then that's what you get out. The two things for me regarding that, right? We, Marcus and I, and Coach Holman, um, Adam's not as big of a basketball guy as us, but we really enjoy. It. I, I watch NBA when I'm home after I eat for 30 minutes before I go to sleep. We'll go to Utah practice. We actually stole an offense from yeah. our basketball team. Yeah. So in the sense of drills and schematics, well, I love watching basketball. Um, <clears throat> regarding just coaching pieces, right, documentaries. Um, we actually watched as a staff, we planned on watching 10 minutes of the Nick Saban and Bill Belichick um, thing on, what was that on? It's the Art of Coaching yeah, on, HBO. on HBO. I don't know if you guys heard it. If not, watch it, it's phenomenal. We planned on watching 10 minutes, we watched an hour and a half straight in, in our film room together, and we finished it. Um, just learning from the best and hearing what they have to say, and in a way, how similar coaching is across the board. 
It's just how you are with your team, like Coach said, the cultural piece of you make it fun, you make it realistic. How, how do you get your team better? Um, but yeah, being around peers like our own, guys that play professionally and are coaching, there's more and more each year. Um, two or three guys that get added to the group each year um, as we've been playing for um, seven years in now at the professional level. Um, I had a kid, John Crawley, who coaches at Lehigh, who we're going to be playing in, two, in week two or three. Um, I sat next to him on the bus and we shot the shit for 30 minutes after practice. Him asking questions, I didn't realize that, that I'm getting older. Uh, he's like 24. Um, and I was like, Shit, man. Well, you're I was like, all right, well, I've been, I've been doing this a little bit longer than him, and it's cool to see, right, just that, um, that piece of bouncing stuff off of each other and not giving too much away, but um, it's a family in a way still, right? And uh, um, it really is cool to see. So. That documentary you guys did was really good with ESPN. Yeah. Uh, it's hard. Get my hair cut? Yep. <laughs> I haven't had my hair cut since. It's been like two years now. Yeah. <laughs> I, watched, I watched that a few weeks ago. It was good. Thank you. You know how much trust I have in Paul Carter there? I have a razor in the back of my head. I've done that kid since he's been like 14 years old. So that took a lot of trust. He went to town for a while. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm going to wrap up. I mean, um, we got stuff to do. And, and I know you guys are tired of hearing us talk. but. The one thing I, I'd like to leave you guys with, is, you know, first of all, congratulations that, that you're out there spending time with these kids and, and trying to help them. Um, to me, the biggest thing about coaching isn't anything to do with the X's and O's and <clears throat> drills and, and what you're doing or not. It's, it's, it's the mentorship. It's, the, it's, it's really, how are you helping these young kids grow and, 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 and develop? At whatever matter. You, know, you can go 0 and 12 and have the greatest time and, and have an impact on the young person's life. Um, the score shouldn't matter. Wins and losses shouldn't matter. I, and I know, I know, this sounds like cliche-ish, but, but at the end of the day, man, it's, it's don't ever forget that you're 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 moment by moment there with a, a young person that that you have an influence on by your body language, by your voice, by what you say to them, by just however you deal with them. And it, you know, that should be the focus. The focus shouldn't be on worrying about whether we catch the throw or not. It's, it's, it's enjoying those moments and, and really keeping the bigger picture alive of what impact it, that all of us always have every single time you step foot on, on a field with a young person. Um, and if that's at the forefront, and if that's really where you're coming from, the rest of the shit doesn't matter whether you can get a ground ball or you're done. Um, so keep that going, and, and I just congratulate you guys for putting your time in. And it's not easy in today's world. It gets harder with the parents, and I do know that. Um, but, but don't let that deter you from having an impact on a young person's life every single time you see that. Um, and, and that should drive you just to keep doing it. Good luck. So, thanks, man. Good comments. Thanks. No, yeah. Thank you. Thanks, everyone, for coming. Thanks for doing it. Yeah, absolutely.